Fuck the hype, you're listening to Damn Well Better, the Rebel's Guide to Health. This is the podcast where we cut the shit of the fitness industry and bring you the real information you need to live a healthy life. On International Women's Day, I received a DM asking me for my thoughts regarding thirst trap photography juxtaposed with, you know, strong women captions. He said, I understand sexy pictures when you want to post sexy pictures, but I don't get the sexy picture on International Women's Day. It seems like a mixed message. And he showed me an example a photo of a woman in what appeared to be a lace teddy top with a here's to all the strong women that lift each other up on International Women's Day type caption. Now, it's a strange visual if you don't know what you're looking at. So let's sort of deconstruct the ways our culture fucks bitches up. You see, as women grow up in America, we are taught all of these conflicting mores and codes of behavior. I'm sure men have a different unwritten rule set, but for now, I'm just explaining why women take pictures in lacy nighties and say things about empowerment on Instagram. It's kind of like the Madonna whore complex is playing out in our heads at all times. For those of you who don't know, the Madonna whore complex was coined by Freud, who was examining men who couldn't find any sexual fulfillment or desire with their good girl wives and only with prostitutes and dirty women. But they couldn't marry those types because, you know, they have no value. The whole lady in the streets, slut in the sheets thing. Somehow we're supposed to be beautiful, sexy, and desirable, but at the same time innocent and shy and monogamous. We're here to fulfill men's desires, but not rock their egos. So why are women who have a lot of sex not to be, quote, respected? Why do people speak about them as if they have less value? Are they bad people? Are they stupid? Are they spiteful or hurtful? Or are we maybe playing out gendered cultural roles that were put in place long ago by religion and the insecure men who made those decisions? Most religion puts women in a weird position, where we're exalted for being mothers, but devalued as a sex. Our opinions and our leadership is not welcome, but our capacity to breed and raise children is, like, over-glorified. It has resulted in this phenomenon where women are the unspoken gatekeepers of all sex and sexuality. We're always being blamed for having sex, for not having sex, for teasing, for being too cold, for getting pregnant when we should have kept our legs shut, or for being in the position to choose whether or not to have an abortion, how we raise our kids. Oh, and God forbid anything goes out of normal bounds with your kids because it's definitely going to be all on the mom. Even the shit we cannot control, like getting raped, all of it is our fault somehow. Men are portrayed as these wild beasts who can't control their lust, so we have to mitigate it and appease them, but somehow at the same time, they're so much more level-headed than women, so naturally they are the leaders. We just have to cover our bodies up while they lead or something. It's weird. And because it's controlled by men through both conscious misogyny and unconscious misogyny, our sexual window is from legal to 25 or so, as soon as we begin to have children, and then we are mother. Therefore, we are resigned to modest attire and sacrificing everything, including all aspects of our lives and our passions and our personality, for the children. Like, when I had a baby, Liz was done. Now it was all mom, and all I was allowed to care about was the healthy development of my kids. A toe in any other personal waters was scandalous. What kind of a mother would? At a point, a woman is left so far apart from who she actually is, she can snap. But she can't show it. So we all do this weird dance. We play this game. For example, the guy that posed the question is in Utah, so I'm sure he sees how beautiful Mormon women make themselves up to be. Lashes, fake tits, Botox, hair extensions, skin-tight pencil skirts that are still within the gameplay of modest at church. Y'all wouldn't believe this, but at the Costco in Utah, along with oil paintings of white Jesus come Christmas time, every spring we have this pop-up women's fashion kiosk called Modest Sexy. I'm not kidding. And it describes this whole thing to a T. 
Women want to express themselves, but they aren't allowed to because sexual women are bad women. And other women compete in this game too. It's not just the men. Other women love to be the gatekeepers of who is respectable and who isn't. And sometimes they're on the money, but more often than not, they're just afraid their own husbands might be creeping on this bitch's Instagram. They're just as insecure. So that's the base of it, right? Now we're gonna add feminism. Now, feminism is a topic you are not paying me enough to teach you about, and frankly, I wouldn't be the best teacher. I said what I said. In my opinion, third wave feminism is getting the intersectionality and the anti-racism part down. It's really deconstructing the gendering of everything and the assigning roles based on gender. It's also about destroying the power structure that puts rich, white, cis, hetero, able men, regardless of their character, up on top to make all the rules and set the tone for everyone on down the social hierarchy. Now that's good shit, but, and here's where I might get in trouble, sometimes I think they value empowerment over liberation. You don't have to be hypersexual to be empowered. You don't have to be uninhibited. You don't have to be riding dicks this way and that and having it hit the dangly thing in the back of your throat to be free. Sex work is valid, but it's not always healthy work. And I feel expensive strippers and cam girls are making it sound like it's so empowering because they are quite protected. They aren't the ones that are strung out on the streets or showing up on the porn set of what was supposed to be lesbian stuff and now it's gangbang DP or some violent gagging reel. No one ever talks about that part. Just the twerk and make it rain, haha. <laughs> Women are being fed this stuff too. So anyway, the point is being empowered to do something doesn't mean you are free of the system that makes you feel like you have to be sexual to be powerful. In a roundabout way, the answer to this question is a lot of women have all this ingrained cultural shit going on in our heads at all times, the rules of the game. And then there are all these other mixed messages about wanting to reclaim our power, you know, and that gets thrown on top. And honestly, you're just gonna see this growth play out in real time while they find the balance between their sexuality and who they really are. You're gonna see boundary pushing and missteps, and you're also gonna see moments of brilliance that make you realize we are all just people and that women can be respected for who they are and not what they wear. And sometimes a thirst trap is for clicks and likes. We all have to remember sex sells. I remember looking at a popular Utah woman's Instagram once and she was wearing lingerie in the nursery talking about just waking up. And I was like, yeah, hon, is that how you wake up? Fredericks of Hollywood in the baby crib. But she's got a gun emporium and the image of a super skinny, big titty wife and devoted mother sell more guns, I'm sure. And lastly, you know what, speaking of titties, I'm gonna tell you the story of my titties. I was probably a late bloomer, maybe B cup max through sophomore year, but then something happened. They went from sweet little Bs to huge double Ds right before my junior year. I hated them. Boys made jokes, adults always advised me to keep it cleavage free. In fact, everyone was always checking for cleavage, Jesus. I remember thinking I couldn't wear any cute shirts because I'd look like a slut. And it wasn't fair that my flatter-chested friends could wear fitted tank tops and look like pretty summer girls, but if I wore one, it was watch out, little Miss Attention Whore is on parade. But I grew up, I had kids, and I breastfed them, which put me in a position to be pretty much tits out and exhausted for years on and off on end. But it finally gave me the confidence to be like, dude, fuck this. I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm feeding children here. But people cared. Folks had heart attacks when I breastfed. They ushered me into dark coat rooms at parties or told me to go to the bathroom at a restaurant. I remember being at a party which was held in a private room with a chair. I could have easily sat in the corner, but I was advised to go out into the car. It was like fucking 90 degrees. You know, and I was good with the blanket cover. It wasn't like I took my whole top off and sat there F cups heaving and lactating for all to see at the local Italian chain restaurant. I was discreet, but that wasn't enough. And now years after breastfeeding, my tits are done and they're saggy and I hate them again. This time it's because they don't look good. They look old and worn. And when I wear a cute tank top, I don't look like a pretty summer girl or even a big titty floozy. I look like a hag. <sighs> So to recap, nearly all of my life, I have hated a natural, beautiful part of my body. And why? Why is that? Because I have a body image problem? No, because society has a sex problem. Because my worth 
is always tied to my youth, my beauty, and my purity. And all of those things are tied to the insecurity of the men who made the rules. Now I'm lucky. Even though I had issues with my body, I was always a bold bitch. I grew up on Cyndi Lauper and vintage Madonna. I was putting on lipstick when I was like nine, thinking I was a whole ass adult woman. I was never stopped in that regard. I was allowed to be as weird as I wanted. And don't get me wrong, I was curbed. My parents did their job, but they didn't stifle my creativity. There was no religion in my house enforcing what a good girl was or saying that sex was bad. Nobody was telling me I was gonna be a man's wife one day or even a mother. My future was always presented as a wide open space for me to create. There was music and movies and art and I was able to explore myself, you know what I mean, and be comfortable a long time ago. If I had missteps and weird pics, it was back in the 90s and mm, bummer, the evidence is probably gone. And that's why my sexy shit is presented and my sexy joke pics and all of it in a way that seems natural because it is. It's who I am, and as a photographer at heart, it's the art I like to create. I like to think I can be naked and respected because of who I am. And the amount of men up here that actually like to talk to me about life and science and topics of the day, and after they drop a fire emoji, proves that. You know, one day I hope the content of our character and not our gender or sexuality will define our place in society. Even though the times are changing, our culture still has to catch up. Now, this is just like my opinion, man, on the whole topic. The woman in the photo that my buddy showed me might not carry any of that baggage, or more likely she has her own mixed bag of shit, which might include some of what I talked about, and maybe some personal experiences that I don't understand. But when I showed my husband, he said, you know what this looks like to me? Just a woman that felt like she looked really, really pretty in this picture and wanted a reason to post it. Hey there, my sexy little rebels, what is up? This month has been pretty wild and it is going to culminate with the release of the Iron Beaver Guide to Nutrition. On Monday, I am going to be doing a giveaway, so stay tuned because you might win something. Next week, I'm also gonna have on Karen Preen of Deadlifts and Red Lips to explain to us what exactly does health at every size mean? I think it's gonna be a great bookend to our whole month, which has been dedicated to nutrition and diet. So as always, thank you guys so much for listening. Really appreciate it. I think April's gonna be even better. Hey guys, if you like what I am laying down on this podcast, please go give it a like, subscribe, leave me a review because these uh, Instagram and Facebook algorithms are not helping a bitch out. Thank you all so much for being a little part of the Rebel Club today. If you want more Iron Beaver, I'm on the web at ironbeaverfitness.com. I'm also on Instagram as Iron Beaver Fitness, and we're even on Facebook too. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.